Thank you, Trade Coffee, for sponsoring this episode and supporting my new show. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters. Trade will match you with your own personal selection of coffee and conveniently deliver it right to you. Take the coffee quiz, and Trade will curate matches just for you to be delivered to your door. First 100 people to click the link in the video description below will get 30% off their first order, plus free shipping. Free shipping. Free shipping. That's out of control. It is out of control. I feel out of control right now. We gotta go get some coffee. We don't need to go get coffee. Trey will deliver it to us. Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to Stump Sola! This is the official Stump Sola wheel. This is how we're gonna put a spin on your seven course tasting menu. Are you ready to give it a spin? More ready than the last time. Give that wheel a spin. Oh, convenience store. That means that every ingredient you use in your seven course tasting menu must be purchased at a convenience store. What do you think? So like, I'm gonna take snacks, soda, beer, bodega coffee, and make a tasting menu. A bodega is a slang term for convenience store here in New York City. Are you excited for your challenge? Yeah, this is gonna be a good one. Well, Sola, as usual, I'm excited to try it and happy that I don't have to make it. Good luck, and we'll see you on the other side. Really wish you had that wheel guy now, huh? All right, so we just got back from the bodega. These are all my favorite bodega snacks that I'll be using to make our tasting menu this evening. So when I think of like a tasting menu, I kind of want it to go from like light to heavy. So I want to start light with an ajo blanco which is, um, it's like a savory nut milk. So we're gonna make that with our mixed nuts. I think it should be delicious. Mixed nut, ajo blanco, second course, PBR chawan mushi. So I'm gonna like mix the beer up with some eggs, season it up a little bit, and set it into a custard that we're gonna bake in a water bath. So for the bread course, I wanna take some ramen. Um, I haven't done this before, but I'm gonna try and like pulverize it into a flour and use that to make a flatbread. Um, I'm gonna laminate the flatbread with the seasoning packet. I think that'll be good. And then that's gonna go next to, for me, the main reason to go to a bodega is for coffee and a breakfast sandwich. So I wanna put that into a dish. So I'm gonna do like a warm yolk, little bit of like bacon bit situation. And then I wanna make a foam with bodega coffee and blueberry muffin. I feel like that sweet savory thing, I don't know. I think it's gonna taste really good. I think it's gonna be a really good like middle course. Final two courses, we're gonna start with Bodega Cordon Bleu. So it's gonna be ham with some American cheese inside, coated in a potato chips, and then I wanna try and make like a potato chip puree. That might be gross, but we'll see how what happens. We'll try it, we'll try it. And then, you know, you gotta have a little red meat at the end of any tasting menu. So that's what we're gonna do with our, with our ground beef. So I'm gonna go for like a chopped cheese inspired kind of situation. I wanna make crackers out of crackers. I'm gonna blend up the Cheez-Its, steam it, fry it, hopefully I get this like puffy cracker. And then I wanna do like a seared beef cheddar thing. And then pre-dessert, you need a palate cleanser. No better palate cleanser than LaCroix. Bodegas always have these like mixed melon fruit cup things. And it's always really, really hard, unripe fruit. So I wanna compress it with some root beer and then top it with LaCroix ice. That sounds good. And then the Twinkies. Grand finale. Twinkie, I'm gonna turn the Twinkie into an ice cream sandwich. I'm gonna try and make like a liquid sable cookie with the cake and then swirl the cream in some ice cream that we also got from the bodega. <laughs> this is the last item. Now all the items are here. We're gonna either make something delicious with it or something just terrible. Um, so I'm gonna start by cooking this bacon. I'm gonna use the bacon to make little bacon bits and it's gonna go inside my Ode to a Bodega Breakfast. That's the full title of this dish. Okay, so I'm gonna glaze my bacon in some of these fruit cup juices. <laughs> Just a little fruit cup glaze, why not? I only have enough juice to do half and I'm only gonna do half because I don't think we need all of it. And maybe it's bad, you know? What if it's terrible? Time to put it in the oven, okay. So I'm gonna work on our dessert. So I'm going to dissect these Twinkies, remove the cream filling, and then I wanna dehydrate the cake so I could blend it. Hopefully it turns into like a cookie butter thing that I'm gonna spread, roll out, freeze cut into little cookie circles. It, it, it'll, it'll really, it, it'll make sense when we do it, I promise. Next up, I'm gonna steep my potato chips and the mixed nuts in some hot water. So I'm basically trying to rinse the fat off of these. It might not work. I'm fully expecting this one to be gross and not work, but we gotta try. Let's steep our coffee foam. We got our toasted stuff, coffee from the bodega, and I'm gonna soak 
the muffin in the coffee. Hmm. I don't know. See what happens. Putting it away. So many things are steeping. What's happening with bacon? Bacon's ready to come out. Okay. I think the glaze did something. So this half I glazed in the fruit cocktail. This half I didn't. And it does look like it caramelized and something's happened. But, but we'll taste both and then see which one to use. Okay, so we're steeping our coffee. We're going to set our la lacroix. This is passion fruit. I think it'll be a nice refreshing way to break up our meals. And I just want it to set like a sheet of ice. I'm really hoping that it'll freeze with some of like the carbonation. So just like a sheet, I'm going to pop this in the freezer. Let's infuse the fruit. This is a really fun trick. I'm going to put the fruit in here, cover it with some root beer, and then charge it with nitrous oxide, NO2. Also, on their manual, they tell you not to do this. So don't do this. It's very likely to explode. There's a 30% chance this will explode. Okay, nothing crazy happened. Let's put another one in there, extra pressure, you know, really. I feel like now that I've set it up like this, it's gonna be disappointing if it doesn't explode. Just to, you know, really bump it up, you know? I think that's full now. Yeah, we wanna let the gas out, but we don't want the liquid to escape. So um, we're gonna eject upwards, gently. I'm pressing down on the trigger really lightly. If you go all the way, even though it's held upright, the soda will come right out. Okay, we d it didn't explode. I think we're out of the woods. See, that was fine. Nothing happened. Can you tell it, it, it it's more like glassy. That, that root beer is kind of, um, you know, permeated through it. It's like a quick pickle almost. Look at that, one dish is basically done. It tastes like pineapple, but it also tastes like root beer. Whoa. All right, I think I'm gonna move into the Cheez-It cracker. The, well, it's a cracker, but I'm gonna make a different kind of cracker, mostly because Andrew keeps eating them. I'm gonna try and make like a paste by combining this with some tapioca starch, um, and then I'm gonna try and steam it and dehydrate it. Okay, so I guess I need a food processor. I'm gonna get rid Okay. I think that works. Yeah, look at that. It's like a dough. That actually worked really well. Okay, you're still gonna keep eating it. You're gonna love these crackers. These crackers out of crackers. What's wrong? Need salt? No, it's good. <laughs> this is a nice smooth texture now. I'm gonna spread it onto my parchment round. It doesn't have to look pretty. I'm just gonna fill this up because we're probably gonna break these up and then fry it for like natural looking cracker pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna steam my sheets of Cheez-It smush. We're gonna steam this until it's like set. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Steam! It's already changed color from moments ago. It's hot! <laughs> I'm gonna just let it cook now. <laughs> Steam's hot. I'm not gonna stick my hand in there again because I learned my lesson. But you can see that they are totally like, they've changed color. Hold on. You will see. You will see that they have changed color. We're gonna it's gonna be a reveal. I'm gonna stick my head in there. Woo, hot stuff. Okay, it's like changed color and it's cooked through and it's like set, you know? It's not like a dough. So I'm gonna pop these guys in the dehydrator now and then we're gonna fry them. So these guys have been soaking for a while. The potato chips absorbed a lot of water. Wasn't expecting that, but I'm gonna drain them. So this did accomplish what I was hoping. You can see this water is like really murky and greasy. So all that like stale oil and extra salt has come off the nuts, and I'm gonna soak them again in some fresh water. I'm gonna let that soak overnight, and tomorrow we're gonna blend into nut milk. And now I'm gonna deal with this that I have very little hope for this, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah, we removed fat, so now they're just like wet potatoes, and I hope they turn into potato puree. I'll taste it, why not? It kinda just tastes like a wet potato. I think this might be okay. Ooh, look at that slide right in there. Okay, <laughs> let, let me assess the bacon. All right, so this is cooled off and I just wanna taste and see if we're gonna go with fruit cocktail glazed or classic. I chew a lot. You totally don't taste the glaze at all. Not even a little bit. They're exactly the same. So since they taste exactly the same, I'm gonna just chop them up. You know, we tried Sometimes you get stumped. When I think of tasting menu food, I feel like it's always really small. 
you're gonna leave hungry. Spend a lot of money. For our honeymoon, we, we had a tasting menu dinner and it was like $600 and it was like one of the most expensive meals I've ever had. And I left so drunk and so angry because I was starving. Okay, we're gonna make a foam. My toasted muffin that's been soaking in our coffee with cream. And then the booze really hits you. Hits you hard because you, you've been sitting there for three hours just having like one bite every 20 minutes and then we got in and out after. So I'm gonna take some of my reserved coffee. We're gonna add some gelatin. So we're just gonna really gently warm it until it's melted and that's it. If it feels hot, we've gone too far. Back in the blender. So we wanna get at a gentle vortex and then I'm gonna add the gelatin in. It's a terrible color. Really just the worst color. With this, we're gonna shake to evenly distribute the gas and we're gonna charge it one more time. Cool, foam. You know, it's another form of entertainment, I guess, you know? You could go watch Book of Mormon or go eat a lot of small food. So this is the fluff, the innards from the Twinkies and I'm just going to swirl it into some ice cream. So this is gonna go in between my Twinkies that I'm gonna blend and then turn into something. I'm gonna pop that in the freezer. Cool. But I guess when I think of tasting menu, I guess it's really conceptual. You want like a succession of little tasty bites and it should like kind of tell a story. I think that's that's what you're really there for. So hopefully this tells the story of bodega. Are you ready to watch me peel grapes for half an hour? So here we go. There's really no trick to it. You know, you just, you just peel your grapes. You really have to be a certain kind of person to enjoy this. I really enjoy doing things like this. Is this something the audience is gonna really be into? not just peeling it for fun, although this is a lot of fun. It helps the pickling liquid really penetrate. I mean, you could just cut them in half. We're gonna peel them. All right, that's it. I'm done with the grapes, I'm gonna pickle them. Instead of putting sugar, should we just use more root beer? That's cool. There's so much root beer happening in this now. Well, root beer, some vinegar, salt, Um, needs more root beer. Ooh, it's perky. I'm just gonna pour this over our grapes, let it hang out, and we did it. Seven pickled grapes. Only took half an hour. And the Twinkies got really nice and dry in the dehydrator, and I'm hoping I can blitz it up into like a cookie butter. Fancy chefs call this a liquid sable. I'm gonna just let that go and see if it liquefies. Like a nut butter, you want it to get kind of creamy and soft and spreadable. But um, you know, I haven't done it before with Twinkies. Hmm. 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 I think we're gonna need to add a little fat. This is feeling very, very dry. Not everything's gonna work today, guys. But it's cool. That's why you're watching. Would you believe I've broken a lot of food processors? Would you believe I've never used a food processor? Really? Actually, I haven't either. Maybe we could add something to this. Just a little ice cream you know, to bring it all together. I think this is the way to go. Oh yeah, look at that. It's fine. I mean, it still kind of just tastes like, tastes like blended Twinkie. That's what it is. Texture's good. It's like a dough I'm gonna be able to roll out. Maybe I didn't need to dehydrate it after all. Oh well, we did. And then we put ice cream in it. Okay, I'm gonna roll this out. So it helps to kind of get it spread out to start. I'm going for like just under a quarter inch. This is working. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good. Okay, so I just gotta get this in the freezer now. And once this is frozen solid, I'll be able to like crack it into pieces like a cracker. And I'm gonna put my ice cream layered between a couple of pieces and that's gonna be our dessert. Sheet of Twinkie. So I'm gonna blitz up this ramen um, into a flour and make some flatbread. There's so many things are just getting blended. I'm gonna add some flour beef seasoning packet. Smells good. It smells beefy. It smells very good. It smells very ramen-y. This smells good. Maybe this one's gonna be good. Huh, it really smells like ramen. It smells pretty good. It does smell really good. Okay, I'm happy about how this smells. It does really smell good, Jess. I believe you. Can you smell it from there? Oh God, oh God, oh my God, no. Disaster. Okay, so now for the beer chawanmushi. 
I want to put a little pretzel crumble in there. So I'm hoping I can just pulverize the pretzels, add some mustard and butter and bring it all together. We'll see. With the streusel, you want it to just like barely hold together into these like little clumpies. It's not as clumpy as I'd hoped. Should I add some flour? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine, guys. That'll work. It smells great. It's going in the oven. Pretzel, mustard, butter, streusel. Okay, so these are my tapioca cheese it what did we call this? Smush? And what should happen, if this all worked out properly, is as soon as it hits the fry roll, it should puff like a chicharron. Let's give it a shot. Are you puffing? I see bubbles. Uh, it's, maybe the oil needs to be a little hotter. Uh, that wasn't the, the dramatic puff I was hoping for. I'm gonna turn the fryer up a little bit. Okay, let's see how this is. It's not like totally crispy all the way through. I think maybe I didn't flatten it thin enough, but I have some corners that are nice and thin that I think will work out for this. So this is much thinner. I have high hopes for this piece. Yeah, I think the hotter oil is helping too. This one feels more successful to me. Machiza it chicharrones. Ooh. Oh <laughs> It's okay. I totally did forget about it though. It's a little toastier than I wanted, but it's fine. Pretzel, mustard, streusel. This is a very hard word for me to say. This is my ramen paratha dough that's been resting. And we're gonna try and roll this out. Gonna cut the dough into portions. With paratha, you roll it out twice. So this first roll, we just want it to be as thin as possible. And then we're gonna roll it up with some fat to like laminate it, get layers in there. And then roll it out again. Softened butter is great for this because it kind of stays put when you roll it up again. Sprinkle on a little bit of our beef seasoning and a little pinch of flour just to help keep those layers distinct. And now we're gonna coil it up. Bring in both sides like this and then smush. And we've created like so many layers in that bread. So when we roll it out again, it's gonna be super flaky. I'm gonna get my beer chawanmushi going. So chawanmushi is a custard. Usually it's dashi set with some eggs and then you steam it gently until it's just barely set. And normally there's like little treats hidden inside like shiitake mushrooms. Um, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do a pretzel streusel on top and, and set our mushis right in here. And then I'm gonna steam it in a pot. So I will dice up some ham. So there's little ham treasures at the bottom of this. Got our little surprise ham chunks. Some more treasures, a little bit of pretzel nuggets. That'll probably get like soggy and interesting, hopefully. So I'm gonna do two eggs. We have ramen packet, which is basically instant dashi. And I think that the bitterness from the beer is gonna really balance out, you know, the richness from the eggs and the ramen packet, right? I'm feeling this beer. There's a little more custard than I need. Just a touch. That's pretty good. I mean, ramen packet makes things taste good. This is one of the sillier things in this meal. Okay, I'm gonna save this in case something goes wrong and these don't work out. It's possible. I wanna stay close to this while working on the cordon bleu because I do not want this to overcook. We're gonna do ham with cheese inside of it, breaded in potato chips. I'm gonna smush it up in this bag so we can get it nice and fine. Oh God, there's a hole in it, no! <laughs> It's gonna be okay. You can't even see that. I'm in the wrong, I'm too far away. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm talking to the custards. Oh, they got oh. they, they got poofier than I expected. Stop bubbling. This is an interesting one. Right, we have our three stage breading. Now we're gonna roll up some ham with some cheese inside of it and see how that works out. Like a little burrito. Hmm? Okay, that broke. Maybe I should coat it in flour before trying to roll it so we get it really evenly coated. Okay, it broke. It broke. No. No. Ham doesn't want to curl like that for you, does it? We're gonna make the ham work for us, yeah. What if we go like this, huh? We roll it this way and then we roll it this way. Maybe we trim this off a little. That might work. Dust and flour, okay, it's staying together. Okay, we did it. 
so stressful. I was so stressed for a moment. I don't know, could you tell? I'm fully expecting this one to be gross and not work. There's no way that's gonna be good. This might not work. I wonder if he's gonna hate all of this. And it could be terrible. I have very little hope for this, but we'll see what we can get. I wonder if any of this is gonna taste good. It might be terrible. The potato chip puree is gonna be gross. A lot of this will not be good. I mean, none of it's gonna be fantastic. I don't know if this is gonna work. You can tell me it's bad. We may have stumped me. Whoa, that's not bad. It's just like a chow and mushi, barely held together with the egg. You get a lot of savoriness from the ramen packet and the bitterness of the beer really comes through. I think the pretzels might've been a mistake. These are the potato chips that I soaked and drained and I wanna blend it up and hopefully we can get like a nice smooth palms puree kind of mash. Okay, here we go. I'm really putting all of the tools through it. I mean, uh, it looks palms puree-ish. It, it does have the texture of mashed potatoes. I think passing it, adding butter, that's gonna be totally good. Something was easy. <laughs> this is the thing I most thought wouldn't work. It even, look at that, it looks pretty good, right? Okay, I think this is good. <laughs> it's so smooth. Let me assemble the ice cream sandwich. Oops, there's still some potato on me. Is there a potato on my face? There is? Really? Okay. <laughs> Let's see how this came out. Oh, it didn't set up as firm as I wanted. Oh, you know what we can do? Mm, since it's like flexible, maybe we can roll it so it's like a Twinkie again. I'm into that. I think I'm gonna let this firm up and then slice it and I think it'll be like a quick, easy little pop. Know what I'm saying? What do you think? Okay. <laughs> Oh God, everything's melting. Oh God, oh God, okay. I think, I think this has to return to the freezer, but we got, we got it. We got, we got one. Things are happening. Things are coming together. It's gonna be okay. This was the passion fruit liqueur that we just set. And I'm hoping to get some thin sheets. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's perfect, okay. You can still taste the passion fruit. All right, that's good. I'm happy with that. Okay, it's gonna get real chaotic once service begins. Real chaos. Let's just go into it. Just go into it. Is he ready? Are you ready? Okay, it's time to serve. Let's do it. No more waiting. I gotta just do this. So here we have root beer pickled grapes with mixed nut ajo blanco. Enjoy. Wow, thank you. All right, here we go. First course. All right, so this is like a pickled grape nut soup. Hmm. That's actually quite good. The um, ajo blanco is very lightly nutty, like just barely. The grapes are really where I'm getting them the nut flavor from, even though she said it was, it was, it was, they were pickled with root beer, right? So let me try one of the grapes on its own without any of the blanco. Mm. See, that tastes like root beer. I'm not even playing this up for camera. That's genuinely cool. That's really good. Like, peanut butter genuinely. and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly, that's the <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. That's PB and J. Course two, Paps Blue Ribbon Chawan Mushi with mustard, pretzel, streusel, and ham surprise. Ham surprise? <laughs> Enjoy. All right. You didn't even have to call it surprise. I'm sure I'm gonna be surprised. So this is, it seems like kind of a custardy kind of thing. I see a little bit of ham surprise in there. That one I'm gonna put more in the, in the category of interesting. Um, it's very savory. I'm in no position to judge this, by the way. <laughs> You're so much more an accomplished chef than I am. I shouldn't be here like giving feedback on this. You're but... eating out of a beer can. <laughs> I mean. Fair. Because the first thing that hits me is beer. There's very, very clearly PBR in here. Then we have these ham noodles. <laughs> Is that what these are? Oh, there's also, there's, 
soggy pretzel and crunchy pretzel, duo of pretzel textures. <laughs> the fact that these turned out to be pretzels is actually a little upsetting. <laughs> I'm gonna try the streusel on its own, see what the deal is here. Streusel's very good. Is it spiced with like a curry or something? Just mustard. Just mustard. Okay, you know yeah. what it reminds me of is, is those, yeah, those, um, those mustard pretzels. See how I connected those dots there? This is a dissection of some very lovely snacks. It's um, interesting to look at, but it does look like something that you would serve in a beer can. <laughs> Here we have an ode to a bodega breakfast. <laughs> so far I've been delighted immediately by everything you've, you've brought out, anyway. So we've got uh, bacon and egg with coffee muffin foam and a ramen paratha for dunking. Oh my Enjoy. God, this sounds amazing. Okay, oh, it's hot. It smells good. So I'm, I'm just dunking it right in here. Oop, whoops. The foam is really good. Let me get some bacon on here. Is that raw egg too? It's a warm jammy egg. Oh, warm jammy egg. You're speaking my language. Mmm, mmm, that's really good. She made this from a bodega? This is breakfast in a bite. Mm, that was great. That was really good. Last one, interesting. This one, really good. <laughs> this is a chopped Cheez-It. <laughs> oh my God. So it's like a chopped cheese with Cheez-Its? With Cheez-Its. These are two of my favorite things in the world. I mean, come on. This just tastes like a cheese it cheeseburger. It's the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> That's quality. You don't go to a bodega and think that you can get something like this until now. Thanks to Soba. Salty, cheesy, crunchy, cheesy. I get a commemorative cheese it box to take home. We have to reuse that for the next guest, actually. Okay. Here so is chickens. the Bodega Cordon Bleu. Let me sauce you, sir. This is a red-eye gravy with old Bodega coffee. And we have a potato chip puree. I love how you, you, you still included old. That looks beautiful. This is Instagram, <laughs> frankly. I'm gonna snap a pic of this and people are gonna be like, I didn't know that 11 Madison Square Park was back open. Can I get a reservation? It's really good, so you effectively made a mashed potato out of potato chips. Stunningly creamy, considering the trauma that you put those potatoes through. They'd already been sliced and deep fried, and then you pureed them. I would have expected that to be gummy, but it's really nice and light. The red-eye gravy, very flavorful. This is delightful. I'm gonna get a little cross-section on this here. Uh -huh. so we got some ham, and this is crusted in potato chips. Is there a cheese element? Crap, oh. deluxe. That's delightful. Mm. All right, dessert. There's more. This is <laughs> Bodega Fruit Cup, uh -huh. compressed in root beer with La Croix ice. Whoa. Get in there. Gladly. It's even sealed for my protection. Oh, oh my. Which La Croix did you use? Or I'll, 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 hang on, I'll, I'll tell you. It's passion fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know my LaCroix. I'm a hipster living in Brooklyn. Mm, it reminds me of some candy that I had growing up. Like something I would win at Chuck E. Cheese if I got 10 tickets, you know? One of those things. But in a really nice way, obviously. Most people hate honeydew. I think that this is a honeydew redeemer. And it's a nice, light, refreshing palate cleanser. It's not too sweet. That's the key to a palate cleanser. It should be, it should be light, it should be cold, usually. Refreshing. And that's everything this is. And it also is just disappearing from my palate. It's, it's got lovely flavors, but it's not overwhelming. It's not gonna carry into the next course. That's why it's a palate cleanser. Final chicken. I like to call this Twinkie Reborn. Whoa. It, <laughs> yeah. I saw you grind up Twinkies into a powder and you've, you've remade it into a new one, a new Twinkie. And it's cold. Look at that. Mm. It's so much better than Twinkie. The cookie butter is so rich. It still has texture to it. 
Like it's got a little bit of like cookie crunch, a little bit. And then the ice cream inside, you made this from the filling. Mm -hmm. So calling it Twinkie Reborn is the humble way to put it because this is, should be the Twinkie reinvented because this is a Twinkie that's been made better with science and technique, knowledge, skill, power, and so on. Hmm. Wow. So you just gave me a seven course Michelin starred tasting menu out of things that you just found in a convenience store. And yeah. what I really loved about it was that you weren't trying to hide the fact that the ingredients were, the, were from the convenience store. You were celebrating mm -hmm. the convenience store, the, bod the bodega experience. I love bodegas. I love them too. Yeah. And this is where I get all my breakfasts after I've had too much fun. At the end of these episodes, normally I ask you, do you think you've been stumped? Uh -huh. And I'm still gonna ask you that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface that with, I don't think you've been stumped. I think that you just <laughs> knocked this one out of the park. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. Uh, I'm very happy with Twinkie Reborn. Twinkie Reborn That's was, my favorite. Yeah. Um, and the Bodega Blue. Surprisingly, was, the potato came out better than I thought. Herculean effort, not just a Herculean effort, for, but a huge payoff in a really succinct celebration of the bodega. You stumped us. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the handshake at the end. Next time. <laughs> Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode. I took, I, I took the coffee quiz and now I'm enjoying my first box. Make sure when you take the coffee quiz that you rate your matches so the coffee can set coffee every trade. Mm -hmm. Make sure when you take the coffee quiz, make sure you, make sure when you take the coffee quiz, you rate your matches so that trade can send you coffee you're gonna love every time. The first 100 people who sign up at the link below are gonna get 30% off their first box plus free shipping. 30% off? Plus free shipping. Plus free shipping. Mm -hmm. If they click the link in the video. Yeah, just go, go click, link. I think I understand all the terms and conditions. They apply. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're gonna like this course no matter what happens to it. Is there a cheese that fits? More than half is left. How many are left in here? Just check. Yeah. 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 As long as you got me. Yeah. So we'll just replace all the components that don't work out with cheese and components. Coming season two, make batter slave cilantro. How's she gonna do it? Stomp Sola, 2021. I like that one.